Plastic anyone? Sure I can't tempt you? But do you realise how much plastic we eat? So you're probably familiar with plastic ending up in the stomachs of marine animals. But did you know that microplastics, tiny pieces of plastic about the size of an ant, are taken up into animal tissue, including the ones you and I eat? This is by trophic transfer, and it's an indirect way that microplastics get into animals' tissue, including ours. Tiny predators, zooplankton, mistake microplastics for food. When they're foraging among the phytoplankton, which is like the floating grass of the sea, they mistakenly eat microplastics. And zooplankton are right at the very bottom of the food chain. So they get gobbled up by small predators, which in turn are eaten by larger predators, and these by even larger predators, and so on. So each predator eats its prey. Some of those tiny pieces of plastic are taken up into the tissues of the consumer. So there are concentrated amounts of microplastics in the animals at the top of the food chain. And then there's us. Whiting, cod, oysters, crabs, all the kinds of seafood we love to eat, all have been shown to contain microplastics. So where does this microplastic come from? Well, microbeads of plastic have been put into lots of products, from toothpaste, body and face scrubs, to detergents and disinfectants. These are primary microplastics. In 150 mils of facial scrub, there could be millions of these plastic microbeads. When you brush your teeth or wash your face, you rinse them down the drain. But they're too small to be captured by the filters of our wastewater treatment plants, so they make their way into our waterways and then out to sea. But these are not the only types of microplastics. Getting rid of these primary microplastics is easy. Just don't put them into toothpaste. In fact, whose bright idea was it in the first place to put bits of plastic into toothpaste? But finding solutions to other types of microplastic are not going to be as easy. The big problem is that plastic persists. It never fully degrades. It simply breaks into smaller and smaller pieces. In the ocean, even the largest and most resilient bits of plastic are broken up and degraded by waves and sunlight. They become tiny pieces. These are secondary microplastics. Secondary microplastics might have started out as a drink bottle, a straw or a fishing net. And these types of plastic are more abundant than those primary microplastics like the microbeads in your toothpaste. But there are other less obvious sources of microplastics. Did you know that car tyres are made up of about 60% of plastic? Friction, pressure and heat of driving wears down your tyres. 63,000 tonnes of plastic dust is produced from car tyres each year in the UK. And that's just the UK. Here in Sydney, where our streets drain straight to the harbour, all that plastic tyre dust ends up in the sea. Even our clothes, our outdoor gear, leggings, fleece, they shed up to 700,000 microfibers each wash. Once in the water, plastic microfibers are too small to be filtered out. And in some countries, these fibers are turning up in tap water. Tea bags, yep, even the humble tea bag. Some have a polypropylene skeleton that breaks into pieces. Now, I'm guessing you imagine this great Pacific garbage patch as a floating island of rubbish. But you might be surprised that you could sail right through it and not even notice. That's because most of the plastic in these ocean garbage patches and in our oceans in general is tiny microplastics. Small enough to be eaten by marine animals like filter feeding whales, fish and whale sharks. So what can we do? Companies are steering away from putting microbeads into their products already. Check the ingredient list next time you're shopping to see if they add plastic polymers. And here's a hit list. But remember, it's not all about these microbeads. We need to stop all plastics going into the ocean. We need to manage our waste plastic so it doesn't end up washing down the drains and into the ocean. We need to get better at capturing our waste plastics. But crucially, we need to reduce our use of plastic, particularly single-use plastics, such as plastic bags, coffee cups, and bottles of water. Plastic never fully degrades. It just breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces, and that's when it ends up in our fish and chips. <laughs>